Today we're going to be checking out the Kotobukiya Art FX Battle of Endor Star Wars figure. Jesus Christ, this box is huge. Right off the bat, I'm just going to say, how does anything even have any right to even look so damn cute? Like, how do you go from Ewoks that look like this to Ewoks that look like this? Jesus Christ. Look at them. They're just adorable. Of course, like, this is not a scale figure, right? And I don't even know Kotobukiya does these, like, uh, Star Wars figures. But let's go ahead and just get this out of the box first. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this out of the box with having the camera on. But these things are, like, gigantic. I'm not even sure if I'm able to get it out. So first we have instruction manual. So there is some assembly required. So I'm going to have to follow this sheet. And put all of these little boys in. So let me pull this out of the box first. And then uh, we'll go from there. Alright, I got the guys out of the box. And you see here there's, you know, the little Ewoks that you're going to assemble and put onto the base. And it goes around the whole thing. Jesus, look at that one. They're just so cute looking. Anyways, um, and then you have your ATST. The one thing about these things is that, like... Until you actually unbox them, you don't really know if any of them are damaged. So if you're looking to like keep these in your collection, if you don't ever open them, you don't really know what's going on. So we have like the base here as well too. And it does come with like a... If I could get this out. Kind of like an art. The actual art that the artist did that this was based off of. If I could peel this off. Without messing this up, this is gonna bear with me. All right, there we go. Cause I don't want to bend this. So yeah, I guess it's like a little, just like a art card that this was based off of, and it's just adorable. Look at it. Yeah, the little guy playing the horn. I think they all. I'm not sure if they're based on the actual individual Ewoks, cause I know some Ewoks actually have names. And you have the ones that are like tying the legs together and Jesus, this is adorable. All right, so let me just get this, get these guys out of the box and then I'll continue. All right, cool. So we almost freed all our boys from their plastic prisons. And one thing I would probably point out is like, if you're planning to keep these in the boxes, I still recommend opening it just to check it even once because you honestly would never know if you have like some sort of broken part in this that you might need to replace or return because there's just so many like tiny delicate pieces and you don't want to wait until like years later you know to realize that something is broken i know there's like a really big market for people keeping things sealed now but for me i plan to just display it so i don't really care that's why i'm opening it but it's just something to be aware of especially if you're planning to keep these things in boxes because it's so easy for like some pieces to be damaged all right, so let's just get these out of the plastic first and then we'll start assembling it. So first, let's get the base out of the plastic first. There's nothing too crazy about the base, to be honest. It has all the slots where the things plug in. It has this like, kind of like very plasticky look to it, but I think it's just part of the aesthetics once you put everything together because it's supposed to be like a, not like a realistic one, right? It's supposed to be like kind of like a cartoony type of style, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty detailed. So let's go ahead and start putting the first piece together and we'll look at the instruction booklet. Let's see. I'm going to assume it really doesn't matter which piece you put in first. But we'll go by the instruction. It looks like you plug the little dude with the horn onto the top of the ATSD first. So let's go ahead and do that. But let's look at the ATSD first. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought it would be. And it's just kind of like a hollow plastic. It's not very, very solid. And But overall, I would say it's pretty detailed. It has like, you know, burn marks on it from, I guess, like what, from it getting hit by weapons. It has like a vine on the bottom, which I think one of the dude attaches to. And I think he goes like here somewhere and then he attaches somewhere. One of these ways he attaches and then that's how it goes. 
So let's put the little guy on top first, and but let's also look at the little guy with the horn. All right, so now let's look at the tiny dude with the horn. Has like a little spear. This is what I mentioned. Like it's very very easy for parts to break off, and if you don't actually inspect your stuff when you get it, you probably won't even notice if they're broken or not. But it just looks so detailed. It just looks so cute. Jesus Christ. All right, so let's attach him to the top of it, and it looks pretty straightforward. So seems like one of them attaches on top, which is him. And then they have like the other two little guys, which we'll look at afterwards. All right, so let's plant them on top of this. If I could just kind of grip it. Kind of the two little slots. Not really that hard to plug in. But of course, like you don't want to like jam it in there and break something. So let's go ahead and try to. Because the, the thing about it is the grooves aren't very, very deep. So you just kind of have to. I'm trying. When it comes to these things, you don't want to grip places that will break. Especially how, since it's like not exactly thick plastic. So I have him in there, but he kind of still sticks out a little bit. I wonder if I could get in a little bit deeper. So let's go ahead and try to push him in there. Doesn't seem like it. Seems like this is the deepest he'll go. I guess it's good enough, right? It doesn't really look like the peg sticking out. All right, so let's unbox the second little guy. This is adorable already. Let's unbox the second little guy, which will be the guy with the bone helm and the hatchet. All right, let's look for him. All right, so we found bone helm hatchet boy. So he kind of got like buck tooth, kind of like a beaver looking guy. Again. Just adorable. So he attaches to to the corner, the right corner of the ATSD. And then next is like some, the C one. But let's just get him first on to the corner. So he has a little, little peg on his chest. So we're going to stab him. <laughs> so we're going to stab him there. Hold on there, dude. All right, he's holding on for dear. <laughs> holding on for dear life. All right, so let's get the uh, the next guy. So the next guy is going to be C. On the picture, it just shows his butt. But C is this guy. So we're going to look for a white one with a hood and a very determined looking face. All right. And I think we found them. So... Determined face. Looks like it could be a girl. So you could like the little details, right? So you got like the little pocket for their knife. And trying his or her damn best to stab at ATST with a knife. <laughs> I'm not really sure where that's going. Alright, so it goes on to the left side. So it should be this then. It has a tiny peg that goes into it. Oh, that one actually just snapped into place. It's kind of a shame though, to be honest. The fact that this one is actually facing directly into it, you can't really see all the details and the face. It feels almost kind of like a waste in regards to the actual design itself. But that's just me. All right, so it's coming together. So we got ABC. So we finished step one. So step two is the two tiny boys there, D and E, that are holding on to dear life, trying to trip it over. So let's find D and E first. All right, and we found our leg holding boys. So this is E. He's very happy and determined holding on for dear life. This is adorable. It has like a little tail. I guess that's his tail or is that a leaf? I can't tell. So we have him. And then we have D as well too. Like a shaman looking guy. I like the actual like really cute detail on the actual helm itself. It kind of has like a face as well too. And then let's just see how they attach onto the base. Alright, so if we f follow the instructions. 
D would go on the right foot, which would be this guy here. And then it should plug into it. Hmm. It's interesting. So how does this work? Like this? And sideways? Oh. There you go. And he plugs right into it. Oh, I guess he's like grabbing onto the foot. Jesus. Okay. And then E grabs onto the vine. How does that work? He grabs onto the vine. What the fuck? Oh, that's it? That's so flimsy. So does it go through both hands? No, it only goes through one of his hands. So that means that this can kind of bend and warp over time, to be honest. Because it's just being held down by weight. Oh, I'm not sure I'm a really big fan of the design. I'm okay with it having the actual vine and I guess it's more dynamic. But I would prefer if this was a more solid material because if this snaps you're kind of screwed so mm, we'll, we'll see when everything puts together maybe he just stands in there so number three is the atst actually stands onto the stand and then that's with his left leg so let's look at that so based on how this is there's only one really really big peg so i'm gonna assume uh-huh. And then this guy just hangs. And then I would assume the small peg is for, like, one of the boys to, uh, grip onto. Let's go ahead and try to get this in there. Oh, that's it. So we have the base. And then this guy just kind of hangs out. And we'll see what these other slots are for. Or maybe it's for one of the boys. Who knows? Let me actually zoom in with the camera afterwards. And then we'll go from there. All right. So now that we've readjusted, we plugged him in. We're going to need a couple more of those little guys. One, two, and three in order of the steps. So we need one. What the hell? Two. All right. So there's one dude here. F, which is some guy falling on his ass. E would be another, and then we need G as well too. So let's get F, E, and G first. All right, so you're going to watch me while I figure this out as I try to do this. So this supposedly goes into here. That's step one. Step two is, oh, God, Jesus. Every time I do, like, Things that plug into bases, I always feel like it's going to break. Alright, so. He's in there. Oh my god. <sighs> I swear, if this snaps, I'm going to cry. These things are not cheap. It just doesn't really, like, I guess, like, you're not supposed to try to force it in too much. If it's in, then it's in. Alright, so. <laughs> He's in there. And then the next step, so number three should be the plug in front of it is where the hovering guy goes. Jesus. So we still have that plasticky winding. All right, so he goes in there. Adorable. Okay. Again, I feel like the fact that this little guy is like flipping this way. You don't really get to see his face. Hmm. I guess those are just some missed opportunities like like her over there. Okay. And then the last guy is F. So he's in front of the leg. It should be only one slot there. And then he's falling on his ass. So we have him here. And we're going to plug him in. Go just sit right there. Try not to break him. 
when you're doing this, you probably also want to clean your hands as well too, because if you have any sort of like oil or something like that, it might actually something. I don't know if it's like gonna ruin it, but you just want to be careful. Next, we're gonna grab H and I, the guy with the bow and the guy with the staff. All right, so staff guy on the right, bow guy on the left, and we got him. So let's look at them first. I guess it can't tell. Is it a girl? It has like a flower on his head. Not that it means that flowers have to be girls, but I guess it's like a shaman. All right, staff guy on the right. Let's just remember that. And then bow. Bow guy on the left. Adorable. Okay. So we probably want to do the one on the right first. So that way we don't end up damaging anything as this thing falls down in the back. All right, so these pegs are actually a lot deeper. So let's go ahead and get those in. Again, I'm trying not to like jam them in that they'll break. Oh God, I feel so scared doing this. All right, he's in there. God, this looks so cute. All right, and then the guy on the left, just plug his stubby feet in there. This is so different from actually like getting a Yu-Gi-Oh figure because the other Kotobukiya that I have is a Yu-Gi-Oh figure. Like, did you? I never thought they would do something that looks like this where it's, it just seems so unique for what it is. Without paying like ridiculous prices for it, right? And I feel like the quality is pretty good too. All right, so he's in there. You don't really see anything else. And then the last one, I probably don't have the cutaway. The last one is J, and there's only one figure left, and it's like a, this one's kind of really funny. It's just like a tiny one that's hiding in the back here. <laughs> so this is a tiny one that's just kind of hiding in the back. It's not doing combat or anything, so I'm not really sure what it's doing. So there is like, like a tiny bit of residue. Um, I got the camera to focus on like the left side, but I guess you won't really notice it. So it's hiding behind this rock here. And just, just chilling. Maybe it's like a townsperson, like non-combat. I can't really get it in there. There you go, get in there. All right, so this is the complete thing. Maybe I could get better lighting. Hang on. So this is it. This is the Battle of Endor Ewoks. I'm not going to do like my usual where I play the music while showing the figure because you'll probably get copyrighted like really hard playing <laughs> any kind of Star Wars music. So again, we have the one hiding behind the rock. We have the shaman looking in a completely different direction from where everything's happening. At the one shooting the bow and arrow. And you have this little one here trying to stab metal for some reason. I think he's the cutest. Like, look at him. He's adorable. And then this guy's just trying his best, hacking away at metal as well, too. Well, there was an attempt. And then... This little guy here hanging on for dear life. Again, like I like the little detail with like the face on the helm as well. Yeah, this guy that just kind of fell on his ass. There was an attempt as well. And these guys just holding on to... I guess it's supposed to look like one single vine and they're both trying their hardest. But yeah, I guess I can It's kind of cool how they got that effect. Since I guess like he covers the bottom of the vine, so it looks like it's one continuous vine. But again, I would probably say like I the one thing I don't like about this is uh, these two over here, him and him or her over there, where however you're displaying the figures, you don't really fully see their face. 
And I think that's a missed opportunity. You could have probably just kind of like in the picture over there where he could be hanging over like a piece of wood, like a little bit more like going that way. So it's more flat. And then this one, I guess there's really no other way around it. But I guess you kind of could have had it hanging from the the side of it. So you actually see the face because what's the point of all this detail if you don't see the face? But overall, this thing is adorable. And it's, again, it's from Kotobukiya. I, if you're a Star Wars fan or just a, a fan of cute stuff, you should definitely check this figure out. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.